so bad with the allergies this year. Hi everybody, Bobby from the Rabbitry Center and we're sitting back here with the kindling totes. We just got done cleaning them out and it's really important on day 28, day 29, you know, if you're using traditional nesting boxes, uh, you know, spring and fall, those work great, but when it's really hot in the summer, when it's really cold in the winter time, you know, we started using kindling totes years ago and we call them kindling totes because in most cases our does are kindling in them. And when we've put out nesting boxes, and kindling totes had you know we've given the does an option they always 100 percent of the time well, i can't say 100 percent one time out of all the times that we were testing this um we had one doe kindle in her nesting box but that night there was a really bad storm but that's the only time we ever had them not choose the kindling totes and these kindling totes are great for summertime for winter time you know if you're tired of watching kits getting pulled out of the nesting box in the wintertime and dying on the cage floor. Uh, you know, these kindling totes, that was the number one reason why we started using them. But what we, what we discovered was our bucks benefit from them too, because when we open up the kindling tote and we touch the plastic, you can feel how cold it is in the summertime. And we've even hit it with the thermostat and it's right around 15 to 20 degrees colder on average. So when you're talking 90s, they go, about, they go down to the tote and it's just like a basement. You go down into your basement and it's nice and cold and you don't even have the air conditioning running. It's because of that dirt, that's insulation. So even in the winter time, the snow will keep it a little bit warmer. But on day 28 and day 29, we always clean them out with fresh wood shavings, a little bit of straw. We use a lot less straw in the summertime because the insulation just isn't needed, but Mama, ne Mama Rabbit will still need a little bit to make a nest. One thing I wanted to talk about though, this time of year, a lot of folks are experiencing really cold mornings and really hot evenings, and that transition, you know, that a few times a year, you'll have this um, kind of like the same time when your pipes sweat in the basement. Uh, it's just that, that humidity. And that comes from lack of circulation and the temperature change and that, that airflow is needed. And these totes at the very bottom of the ramp have, one a, have a, a way in and a way out. Well, the other totes only have one way in and one way out. And those totes that are on the side, they need air circulating holes. And you can just use an 830 seconds or even if you want to drill a little bit bigger, uh, you don't really have to worry about insects because you're going to sprinkle a little DE, diatomaceous earth, and that will attack the exoskeleton of the insect and you don't have to worry about infestations with insects. A little bit of DE goes a long way. You don't have to use a lot of, it's like flour, so it really gets uh, dusty, so don't, try not to overdo it. But, you know, I just wanted to share that because um, we experience that and if, if folks are experiencing that humidity or that moisture in the tote, just drill some, some holes uh, right underneath the lid rain won't be getting in. You want to drain them, you want to drill them really high because just in case there's rain or snow that uh, is accumulating, water is accumulating on the ground, you want that water to be able to erode or run off and make sure your holes are at the very top. That way you don't have to worry about water flooding into the tote. Now, of course, if you live in flood areas, these kindling totes probably won't be an option. But, but I just wanted to share that because this time of year, um, that's a pretty common Address question that hopefully and that helps you. Also, when folks um, wait a little too long to move their kits out to the grow out cage, because what we do is we let our dough kindle in the kindling tote, we let it go a couple weeks at the most, and then we gather them all up. We put them in a grow out cage. We put mama dough in a grow out cage. Uh, just a typical 36 by 30, you know, that's, that's sufficient to raise up the litter uh, enough time to, to wean the litter. But we do that so we can have access to all those rabbits. That way we can quickly inspect them, make sure uh, if there's any issues, we can address them right away. Because if you don't, you gotta track them down, you gotta chase them, you gotta catch them. And some folks that have left it go maybe, or let it go maybe three weeks, four weeks, and you'll open up the tote and they're gone. It's because they're hiding in the tunnel, they're playing up and down the ramp, they're in the run. And uh, I wanted to share with you how we gather them up if that's the case. So we have little trap doors in the tile, uh, in the ramp, and we put our boards into the, the little slot. That way the rabbits can't run. They're trapped in there. And all we have to do is 
pop open the tote and reach into the drain tile and, and take them out one by one. And we'll just use a tote. We'll put them in the tote, cover them up. We'll grab another one, put it in the tote. That way they're not, because they're pretty hoppy. They may hop out of your box or what, whatever you, you're using. So just be prepared, have something with a lid. But got to reach down and grab them. If I can reach, pretty. Oh, I can't reach them. Oh, pretty. This is from a blue rabbit. What is going on here? Ah, wiggly little dude. Look at that, from a blue rabbit. So we got some jeans going on in there. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite end. But what needs to happen is we need to push the kits into the tote. But that's how we do it. And um, we may trap them at one point and then on the other end where the tote, the drain tile that leads out into the run, We'll take an easy grabber, one of those little tools that you just use to pick up trash, and we'll grab a piece of cardboard. I like to use a piece of cardboard because I can tear it to shape. It's flexible. I don't have to worry, it's not hard where I don't have to worry about injuring the rabbits, you know, because if you're putting like say um, a gardening tool, a hoe for example, that's sharp, steel, strong. Sorry, I got a card going by. That's sharp steel and you may actually injure the rabbit or the kits when you're trying to push that thing through. What you're doing is you're pushing an object up that drain tile to push them into the kindling tote. And once they're in there, uh, you can block the tile entrance or access with just a piece of board or the same uh, resting board that we use in the cages. So that's how we remove our kits and take them to the grow out cage if uh, you know, we, we let it go a little too long. You know, folks that are new to rabbits often have a hard time with cage floor bottoms and because they hear horrible things about sore hocks and, and they, um, you know, just don't understand the benefits. And, you know, just real quick, it's just the, the manure and the urine falls through the cage floor. Uh, your rabbits are gonna stay healthy. Your rabbits are gonna stay vented. Most importantly, right now we're talking about um, being able to, the rabbits are sprawled out across the cage floor. All of them are sprawled out, almost like laying them evenly, like a bunch of, I, I look at them and I think of um, my kids when they used to have sleepovers and stuff. There's just a bunch of kids with sleeping bags all over the floor and they're venting, they're, they're cooling off, and that cage floor bottom is so beneficial. And right now with our nesting boxes, our kits don't get uh, shavings, they don't get the paper like they do in the, the spring or the fall and the winter, um, because that's tr you're trying to protect them from the chill. And right now they need protection from the heat stress. And if you'd like to see more about how to pr protect your rabbits against heat stress, I'll put a video up in the corner. And in that video, we talk about different systems. And one is a misting system. And you know, it's important that you have some sort of system like misters or frozen bottles. Um, that's something that's really simple. You can swap your frozen bottles out in the freezer. And if you have enough room in your freezer, um, you know, some folks use big two liter bottles. Over the years, we've tried little bottles and big bottles and the two liters will last hours and hours. Our one liter bottles will last right around three to four hours and it will give them relief. And, and I'll deliver, I'll introduce the bottles right around two o'clock. Uh, I almost said deliver. I deliver the bottles because I get home and I come out here with like the delivery service and put all the bottles in the cage. And that will last right about till six, seven o'clock. At that point, the intense, the intensity from the heat is, is suppressed, or that's not the right word, what am I looking for? It's gone, the heat's gone, and it's starting to cool.